So from the most silly of the five strategies, hope it away, to the most futile of the strategies, outlawed away, we move to a third strategy. And I said explain it away. Now, explain it away and argue it away. This is, the, this is what a lot of intellectual folks and a lot of scholars are trying to do, hoping to uh, uh, sort of decrunchify religion. And the first way is to explain it away. Now, here, one of the ways to sort of diminish its impact, one of the ways to say this, we, we, we need to tame religious people. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to be pejorative about it. I mean, I, I just, I know that this is one of the ways it's, it's done, is we're going to show, we're going to explain it. The New York Times Magazine, I mentioned, was a survey of the last 10 years in which uh, evolutionary scientists have been working on uh, this question. Why are human beings so religious? And if you grant there's no God, if you say there's no God, and everything has to have a natural cause, and if you say, therefore, everything, every feature of your brain and my brain, everything about its belief-forming faculties is the product of natural selection, every single thing about my brain is there because it helped my ancestors survive somehow, then you have to ask this question, why are people so religious? And you have to give it an evolutionary answer. And, and the answer, now right now, nobody quite knows. That's what, that's what the debate's about. Uh, the evolutionary scientists that are uh, were being reported on all agree that there must be some way in which uh, belief in God was something that helped our ancestors survive. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in our brain. And they're, they're, everybody's trying to decide how it happened. And you know, there's, there are people like Richard Dawkins who actually says it's sort of a, it was a misfiring of evolution. <laughs> He doesn't even want to grant that it helped our, our ancestors survive. He just thinks it's a byproduct of some other trait that helped our ancestors survive. He, he won't even grant this. Um, and on the other hand, uh, there are other folks who saw it different. I don't, I don't go into that. Here's what I want to point out. I have been absolutely amazed at the negative reviews by secular people of the new atheist books. Uh, uh, the New Republic... Uh, gave a very learned and very devastating negative critique of Daniel Dennett's book. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, so many, uh, uh, Thomas Nagel of uh, NYU, who's a philosopher, did a tremendously negative uh, review of Dawkins' book. And you know, here's what they said, and these, were not, were, these men were not writing as Christians. And this is absolutely right. So we have a problem with saying, yeah, most people believe in morality. They believe that there are moral absolutes, and most people believe in God. But it's because our evolution, it's because our genetic, it's because we're, we're programmed by evolution to feel that way. Our belief-forming faculties, that there is a God and there are moral absolutes, are, uh, do not tell us that there really is a God. If you have belief-forming faculties that tell you there's a God, it doesn't mean there is a God. It just means that that feeling helped your ancestors survive. So the belief-forming faculties being a product of evolution only helped uh, survival, they don't necessarily tell you what's really there, your belief-forming faculties. They don't tell you what's there, they just help you survive. And all these reviews said, but wait a minute, the problem is that evolutionary scientists use that scalpel on everything else when, <laughs> I think there's a God, well, you were just uh, programmed for that. I believe in morality, well, you're just programmed for that. I believe in evolution. And here's the question. If your belief-forming faculties don't tell you the truth, but only what you need to survive, why believe them? Why believe that when you actually observe the environment, they're telling you what's actually out there? Or that when you decide, I believe in evolution, why should you believe that? Why put the scalpel on everything else? You know, Alvin Plantinga, who's a philosophy professor at Notre Dame, has argued this at a very high level, much higher than I could possibly get across to you. But he's pointed out, and a lot of other philosophers have pointed out, that mild paranoia is going to be much more helpful for survival than an accurate assessment of your environment. And therefore, <laughs> if you believe, if you have a theory of evolution, I'm not saying I'm against all understanding of evolution, but if you have a theory of evolution that says you can't trust what your brain tells you, you can't trust what your, your brain's belief-forming faculties tell you, including what they tell you about evolution, then you can't trust the theory, your theory of evolution. 
C.S. Lewis put it like this some years ago. Uh, he wasn't talking about this directly, but it applies. He says, you can't go on explaining everything away forever. He's really talking about people who deconstructed everything. It's, oh, everything, that's just that, that's just that. He says, you cannot go on explaining away every, uh, away forever, or you will find that you have explained explanation itself away. For example, you cannot go on seeing through things forever. The whole point of seeing through something is to see something else through it. It is good that you can see through a window because the garden beyond is opaque. But if you could see through everything, then everything would be transparent and a wholly transparent world would be an invisible world. So to see through everything is the same as not to see at all. And so how does that apply? Like this. If, as Nietzsche says, all truth claims are really just power grabs, then so is his. So why listen to him? If, as Freud says, all views of God are really just psychological projections to deal with our guilt and insecurity, then so is his view of God, so why listen to him? If, as the evolutionary scientists say, that what my brain tells me about morality and God is not real, it's just chemical reactions designed to pass on my genetic code, then so is what their brains tell them about the world, so why listen to them? In the end, to see through everything is not to see. So, you know, if you try to explain away religion, you'll explain away explanation. You'll explain away what you believe, too. It doesn't work. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.